Hi Thomas. Uh, hello. Hi. Yeah. Nice to have you here with us today. Yeah, it's a long time uh, that you haven't been with us, and uh, but uh, it's a good opportunity to maybe have a, a brief uh, look back yep. to the early years of Neo Online. Mm -hmm. um, you and your co-founder uh, Thomas Schneider, you worked already quite a time with uh, NIR mm -hmm. spectrometry, mm -hmm. but for desktop applications. Mm -hmm. When you decided to, to found Near Online in 2003, 2004, what was the initial idea behind uh, that move? I think that there were quite a few personal ideas, but uh, I would say that uh, the major point that both Thomas and I saw was that the market in process analysis was much larger than the laboratory analysis piece, at least for the future. Maybe not exactly at that point of time, but looking 10 years ahead, the process analysis business we estimated to be at least two or three times as large as the laboratory industry. There were also some other uh, key elements that were available at that point of time, which means that um, there were technology available that allowed you to design an equipment specifically for the process and the process environment. Unlike other attempts that were made earlier where you would take a laboratory instrument, adopt it to the conditions of the process and operate it that way, we took, uh, we had a chance to take a completely fresh view on the technical solution and really select a solution that is dedicated and the best suitable for the process industry. So you started more or less on a blank uh, sheet of paper? We started yeah. on the blank sheet of paper because I think there is no other way to really design a product. Of course, when you're in the design process, you can take elements or known solutions and pick, the, pick them into, into your device, but uh, there is fundamentally a difference in between the process conditions and the uh, lab conditions. In the process, you have to be aware of excessive vibration, you have to be aware of excessive temperature variations, you have to be aware of that you are limited in space, so you cannot have a huge device and expect it to integrate it with the process, so you have to be small, you have to be extremely robust to environmental conditions and you have to have an optical measurement that allows you to correctly capture a product that is moving. Uh, because the thing with spectroscopy is that you need to get many frames. It's like the difference between a still shot with a camera mm. and a movie. So when you're making still shots, you can control exposure time. You can get very nice picture by integrating over a long time and have a long focal depth and all kinds of tricks. But when you have moving objects, you don't have that. You have to have something that captures the image still in a very high quality. So when you look at the different designs, the designs that were used for the laboratory equipment were basically long scanning, so you could say similar to a still shot photo. So the sample was presented and was not allowed to move during the analysis. And what we then selected was a dyed ray analysis, which is more like a full frame camera that you would have in a, in a video system today, and use that and take snapshots of the product. By doing that, you can get to a result and information about the sample much faster and with much higher quality. Around, I think, 2005, 2006, mm. you had the first products in your hands mm. after the phase of development. Mm. But it was not just the hardware, right? It was uh, more than that to, to get started. What were, were the initial challenges when, when really going live with the technology in the process environment? So, uh, the other side, one, one is the interface between the equipment and the product and the environment. The other thing is the user. So the user is not like a lab technician. We don't have the benefit of having a lab technician to operate this equipment. So 
we have to think about what does typical process control system look like, how do these process and plant manager operate with this equipment and what functionality is required from that system. So we built a software solution and a functionality system that is more or less tailored to the way they are working. So it should be really a tool that you can drive and you don't have to alter your processes and what you have been doing for 10 years or longer. So really providing a solution that is targeted towards this customer group rather than what was traditionally the customer group, which is a, a chemist or something with someone with a, uh, with a degree in mathematics or whatever. Yeah? Mm. Since then, mm. roughly 15 years later, mm. around about 1,000 units are uh, installed. So I think your approach worked in a way. And we are still taking advantage of, of this early design mm. because it gives us a solid ground to work from mm. and uh, a good tool in the hands of our customers. When looking back now, laid back, what do you think uh, were the major success factors which made that success possible? So when we started, we were totally unknown. So it took us some time to basically display our name and so on. Uh, but uh, what we tried to focus on was uh, focus on all the applications that are easy to do with NIR, where you don't have technical complication or you need to do a lot of study on whether this application will work or how good it will work, will it be good enough for the customer and so on. So we really said no to a lot of applications in the beginning, uh, which probably would have been feasible, but would have required too much effort. We were only two people in the beginning, so mm. we didn't have the luxury of a lot of resources. Um, so we, we focused really on applications where it's not a question whether NIR works or not, which is quite often the case when you look to the laboratory analysis mm. and lab analysis. So look at only core parameters that you really truly can measure, which is moisture, protein and fat. Those are the main properties, but they are most of the time, I would say 90% of the cases, these properties are adequate for food processing. Um, also, if you look into other processes like chemical processing, then we know that we can measure nitrogen content. We know that we can measure other bonds in molecules in a good way. So, so only focus on applications that are clearly known that they work with the technology. Uh, so that gave us a very high success rate on our products and a high success rate on our products, which means that if we started 10 projects, we finished nine and a half. And that is quite unheard of. So the customer was, uh, a lot of customers had had experience with NAR, but I think that what impressed a lot of customers was our success rate with turning this over. Mm. Uh, then the second point of succeeding in the industry is to become, um, knowledgeable about uh, the customer requirements. And, and when you sell a laboratory equipment, you have one operator, you have one focus. In this case, you actually have the lab as a part of operating the system, mm. providing reference analysis. Uh, you have the operator of the equipment. Uh, you have system integrators that have to deal with the data that comes off the instrument to control valves or additives or other parameters of the process, blending products together, for example. So uh, you have to realize that you have to be able to, to talk and understand the borders and the needs of each of these different customers. And, and that is, uh, I think, where we, we saw that already in the beginning. And because you're a new company, you don't have any set standards or guides on how to do anything. Mm. So, so we were very flexible. Of course, being flexible is only possible if you really have a fundamental knowledge of what you're doing. So because we had prior experience with 
design and software functionality and all of these things over 10 years, <laughs> it, it was easy for us to focus really on customer satisfaction and really pinpointing and formulating what do we need to deliver to make this, this customer happy with our product. Mm. We early also got an interest from distributors. We were basically, we, we focused solely on Germany and we didn't have any plans on going outside of Germany, even though we knew that the market is huge outside Germany. But we said, we are two persons, okay? We can't play all the fields. So we started in, uh, in Germany, but we almost immediately, as we even set our first ad, I'm not sure whether it was Mischfutte or the De Mühle, one of these papers, um, we immediately got contact um, from Japan and people came and they looked at the product and say, fantastic, what I've always been looking for, can I please sell it in my country? And then we said, yeah, yeah, of course, but then you also have to think about, you have to support that you person. You have to support that, right. Yeah. So yeah. it ended up being a lot of traveling. So mm. probably going to Japan at least four or five times a year for a couple of weeks to jointly visit customers to support those sales and building that up. But then the, the whole story expanded with uh, trade shows and, and we got more and more requests from distributors. So I think that we, we built quite a nice uh, distribution network in, in the beginning. Mm. Then after a while it was kind of stopping. We didn't see any expansion. We got some key, key accounts, uh, but that was also in the later stage. I would say the first ye five years was grinding work, doing everything yourself. After that, um, it moved forward also with key accounts, so mm. bigger customers. I think it's a big challenge for any, uh, say, small, innovative, and especially analytical companies to, to build up a global support structure. I think this, that's why there are so many small and mid-sized analytical companies in the market and, and you either stay in that level or you, you find a partner which brings, brings you to the next level. Yeah. And, and I think around 2014 Büchi came into play yeah. and uh, you and your partner decided to, to sell the company to yeah. Büchi. Yeah. Um, so that was then, of course, a big change for you. Yeah? So you're working under a, a bigger umbrella. But uh, there were some win-win situations, I guess, for both sides. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, we, we did uh, attempt to grow. We didn't pick a very good timing. Uh, mm. We invested a lot of money in 2009, and everybody knows what happened in 2009. So mm. kind of threw us back. Um, uh, then there were some discussions and, and Büchi came up and we saw that in order to, to, to grow uh, our market share, we need partners. Uh, we need someone with a worldwide distribution network. Mm -hmm. And uh, Büchi was definitely one of the top choices because you had experience with NR. You even had some experience with online although mm. this online censor had been cancelled a couple mm. of years before you came into discussion with us. Uh, I think that Büchi was also um, quite surprised that this uh, two-guy company within total 10 people could grow to the position where we were selling close to 100 units every year. Um, and uh, that was enough base and I think that also when Büchi uh, went into the market, they heard about us. Mm. I think we were not unknown at that point of time. Um, yeah, which is c kind of understandable because uh, Büchi is also quite present in, in the target markets of the, yeah, of, uh, yeah. the online head at that, yeah. at that time. Mm. So synergies were obvious. Mm. I think also the claim of Büchi, uh, quality in your hands, um, fits quite well to, yeah. to your own approach at uh, uh, you you lived before that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, quality is something mm. you you cannot fiddle around with. Mm. There has to be the 
utter highest priority. Uh, of course you can't make it on the expense of having a, a not sound financial situation, but you have to have quality. If you mm. don't have quality, you will not sustain. Mm. Um, but also it's, it's very important that um, we, we didn't have to push very much uh, into the market. It, it, was, it was more a pull from the market. The market was uh, maturing uh, a lot. And of course, uh, there was, at the same time as we were growing, of course, there were other uh, analyzer companies that came out with more or less similar devices, but we had a, a, a seven or eight year advantage in, in time where we had captured a lot of, a lot of experience. And uh, the ongoing work for, uh, I mean, in the new situation where Bihi is the owner of the company, it didn't really change much on the part of my work and, and my commitment to the company. I was working more or less the same way because I had only one interest is that uh, whatever NIR Online does, they should succeed in doing it. Uh, and the drive is not something internal. The drive is to provide customers with working solutions where they are happy and are happy to, to express that towards you. So that's it's more or less what you're doing. It's, it's very fortunate to be in that situation. Yeah, uh, totally agree. <laughs> yeah. and, and you are at the forefront where you are talking firsthand with the customers. Uh, you are solving some of their core problems for growing or, or increasing their capacity or their, or their profitability, which is a, is a huge benefit for, for many of these companies. So. It's uh, interesting and very rewarding work. To yeah, work. I totally agree and, and can, can really confirm that, especially in that moment, uh, that moment in time where automation plays a more and more important role in industry. Um, it's, it's good to work with the customers on, 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 this, on the strategic level because they already feel they have, they have something in hand yeah. You know, with the first uh, uh, application solved, mm. they feel, okay, they have now a tool in their hand they can use um, for the needs of the digitalization of, yeah. their, of their business, for the optimization of their, um, of their processes. Mm. Uh, so they get control on, on what they are doing. Mm. Yeah? And of course they cannot do it just by themselves because they are no, not specialists in, in, in uh, analytical technologies. Mm. Uh, and then when they feel okay, they get something in hand, they can understand, they can work with, mm. and, and it gives them the insight in their processes they are looking for. Uh, this is quite uh, a, a, a nice win-win uh, situation uh, for, for both partners and it's really fun to, to work with customers mm. in that area. I, I think mm. that's also interesting is actually the customer is the expert on your product. They have, uh, but they, ha they use it in a different way. Like you said, it's for process understanding. They eventually observing how their process is working, they get to understand it. They get the capability to modify it, improve it and measure that. Mm. Uh, and that's and like you're saying, we are working towards industry 4.0. Okay, in a way we do. That's yeah. that is yeah. the smashing word. Yeah, where it's the buzzword. Uh, where it's more a question about uh, data collection, monitoring, statistical analysis, and total plant management. This is the next level then. Yeah, yeah. That's, but that's the next everything level. starts with. M with getting started yeah. measure something. Yeah.